Hi, for this video I'm using a Home Designer Pro 2016. I've drawn a ridiculously long skinny house and created a terrain perimeter. Uh, you didn't mention what, what Home Designer title you're using, but the terrain tools are precisely identical from Chief Architect Premier down to uh, Home Designer Essentials. There's no difference. So what it does by default is it creates a, a, a flat terrain plane. I'm going to click on that and make it a little thicker. I just I prefer it thicker. Covers up the foundation that way. Now we're going to modulate the terrain. And uh, to do that you need two values. Now, the simplest way to do it is to go to uh, elevation data elevation region and then here at the front of the house I'm going to set an elevation region here and set it to zero inches and I'm going to set a terrain elevation area region in the back this one I'm going to set to minus 60 inches you have to have at least two datums zero in this case minus 60 and I'm going to go back to this camera that's open and that's how you get that to modulate. Now, here where the elevation region is, it's going to be flat. And where this elevation region is, is going to be flat. And in between, it's created a gradient between those two elevation points. Now, uh, and you can see there's some elevation lines that were automatically generated. Those are on a, uh, a layer under terrain called elevation uh, terrain primary contours and secondary contours. Those are just graphic uh, graphic objects. Uh, you can't really select them. You can only turn them on or turn them off. <clears throat> Another way to do this, I'm going to delete that and delete this, is by using uh, under elevation da data you can use uh, the line tool. We'll just draw a line here and a line here and this one uh, the, the default value on this one is well, should be zero yeah it is we'll set this one at minus uh, 72 inches 72 inches there we go now I'm gonna go back to the see I get a little bit different result see it, it's not flat here it's just a where I put it just creates a gradient between those two points I prefer the uh, elevation region myself because usually the front yard is going to be flat or relatively flat. So that's the reason I like uh, elevation region because it creates a flat area. Let's look at this elevation region object. It's flat, interior is flat. I'm going to set the height at zero. And we'll go back to this camera I have open. See, and it's flat and then it gradiently uh, trails off. I'm going to move this a little further out. And you'll see that it has a, a slight, slight effect here. I'm going to raise it up a little bit to uh, minus uh, 66. See, now that, that covers the footing of the foundation. And uh, if we want to re reveal more up here, then I would take this one. And where's the open icon? Oh, well. And we'll make this uh, minus six. Yeah. See, it, it, the, these objects just do what you, it, crea it creates an effect on the uh, terrain plane commensurate with what, what you tell it to. Now, we add another data, uh, and this is all with just two datums, this one here and this one here. So you don't need a lot of fancy uh, stuff like a topographical map to get uh, a useful representation of terrain. Let's go over here and uh, we'll use the spline tool. I never use uh, the, the uh, point tool because it will create a point and it will modulate the terrain in a concentric pattern around that point. I haven't found those very useful. Uh, the spline tool, I'm going to draw 
a spline through the middle of the house. And I want a value that's, uh, this is at minus 6, I believe. No, it's minus 12. And this is, uh, I've forgotten, minus 66. Yeah. So let, let's just set this at, uh, now it automatically picked up this value. Let's see what that did. It moderated it up the curve a little bit. I'm going to take this and just move it up uphill a little bit and see what that does. See? As a direct effect, that's the reason I say you make a change and then you check it in a camera view to see if you like that change. Or, and if you want to get it exact, you can even use uh, dimension tools in this kind of a camera here and measure, you know, exact. You can measure your house or your intended uh, grade. See, I'm going to lower this in the front some more. I don't know where, oh, there's the open icon. It's on the wrong side of the screen. Minus 36. Let's see what that does. Yeah, it flattened it out some. So uh, you make a change and then you evaluate the change. Let's see, we'll set this to minus 48. And uh, this line, I'm going to get rid of it. So you can measure, if you're doing an existing house, you can measure from the bottom uh, of the siding or to the siding to the, gra to the grade. And then um, if we need more reveal here, to, there's no, I, can, I can't see a foundation. So I'm going to click on the uh, dialog box and lower the, uh, this building pad to like uh, 42, minus 42 inches. Oop, wrong direction. We're minus 60. You can move the pad around. By changing the values in here. Yeah. <laughs> but you, you modulate the terrain and then set it to the building. Let's see, let's go to 12 inches. See how I'm doing that? I'm just changing the value. Put it to zero. Raises it up a little bit. I'm going to put it at minus 12, raises up a little bit more. You get the idea? So you, uh, you get the terrain plane modulated, modulated relationally collect, correct to itself, and then set it to the building. Set that to minus 24. Uh, minus values raise it up, and positive values uh, push, it, push it down. But that's what I can tell you about terrain. You want to keep it with as few ob objects as, as, as possible to get the uh, gradient in the uh, terrain that you want. And uh, m make a change and then check the change in the camera and evaluate it in several different camera uh, types before you decide, well, okay, that's, that's acceptable. Okay, thank you.